Again, happy Father's Day to all your fathers. Take out your teaching sheets this morning. We're going to get after it. I don't think I'm going to be real long um, this morning. If you weren't here the last two weeks, do me a favor and please go to the website or to uh, Way of Life YouTube channel or uh, Way of Life Facebook and click on uh, last week's message because last week's message um, it was entitled uh, Idolatry, the second part. But if you weren't here and didn't catch those, those two messages, it's well worth the listen. It's so very good, so very informative. So I want to encourage you to do that. Um, uh, this morning, because uh, those were kind of uh, two very intense uh, messages, I thought I would um, help you celebrate by going a little bit lighter today. This morning's message is not a deep or a dark or a hard uh, message, but it's more of a celebration type of a message. And, and uh, once again, we're celebrating fathers. It's Father's Day 2022. And um, if you're a father uh, here or watching online, uh, happy Father's Day once again to you. But this Father's Day message this morning is, um, uh, it's, I, I believe it's very beneficial. As I as I put it together, I've been thinking all week, what did I really want to share? We have a lot of different <coughs> options on days like this. I could I could have uh, three or four of the fathers come up and share, but I wanted to uh, bring out some of the characteristics that I find so very very important as uh, as fathers. So that's what we're going to do this morning over the next 25 minutes or thereabouts. So with your teaching sheets, um, um, I have a I have a verse I'll read in just one second. But Father's Day is really a day to honor the fathers. It's a day to celebrate the fathers. Um, I mentioned I got to go golfing yesterday. I don't know if you're a father. If, if somebody um, cooked you your favorite breakfast this morning, or your grandkids uh, gave you something early in the morning, I was presented with a with a, a lovely shirt for my wife. She came in and said, Happy Father's Day, honey. I got you a new Father's Day shirt. And uh, I thank her for that. And I, and I uh, But I hope that this is a, a day that we can focus on fathers because it's a, really a day to honor what you do and what you've done and what you represent. And this morning, um, uh, as I thought about that, I've taken these what I've done is I've taken the word father and uh, use it as an acrostic to help me um, really bring out the characteristics that I find so very important. On your handouts, and um, this morning I don't believe um, it's up on the screen yet here, it might be, but in the book of Ephesians, Paul talks about being a father and uh, the idea of um, family, and we know these verses, the first four verses out of Ephesians 6, Follow along with me as I read these out of the New Living Translation. Children, <clears throat> obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. For this is right. This is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things, I love this, quote unquote, out of the Old Testament, things will go well for you and you will have a long life here on earth. So good. And then verse 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. So love these verses that Paul instructs, uh, instructs the, the Christians there in Ephesus and even us this morning as we read these. Um, guidance and instructions. Um, they're very good when we're younger, but they're really, really appreciative as we're older once we get into it. So once again, um, these characteristics is really what I, I want to focus on. I have a phrase that I've used for many, many, many years when I'm talking to somebody about um, child rearing or parenting or fathering. I've always said that being a parent, and especially a father, is not for the faint of heart. Would you agree with that? It's not for the faint of heart. It's, it really takes um, courage to do that. 
And as I go down these characteristics, the very first letter we have is F, and the fill in a blank is simply um, uh, fearless. How many of you uh, need a handout? Two, four, six, eight, ten. If you need one, uh, Brian, maybe Carl can get you one, but if not, fearless. Write that word down, fearless. I love this. And I've uh, taken the opportunity to kind of uh, clarify my thoughts so you can follow along. I put them on your handouts. Not afraid of the challenges of life. Life is so challenging. From the day that we become um, a man, become a father, life is challenging. It's hard. It's difficult. But we need to be fearless. I like these, um, these words that kind of give the idea of being brave, being courageous, undaunting, not letting anything mess with you and daring. I like that. I love the verse out of First Josh, or Joshua 1.9. Matter of fact, I've been uh, talking to you uh, since this last month. My, uh, my daughter-in-law gave me that very cool coffee cup that, um, uh, that says, um, uses this verse and then uh, says, be, uh, be of good courage. I'm, I'm going to be with you all the way. But on the outside of the cup, it says, um, let go and let God. It's been my theme the last um, number of weeks, let go and let God. And to be courageous or to be fearless, we have to do just that. Uh, I love the, the story of Joshua. Joshua 1.9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord. Your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua is telling the people, you got to be fearless. Hang in there. And I, I so love, uh, I love the fact that Joshua can actually say this. He can get in front of the people to do this. Do you remember <clears throat> Moses, when they had the promised land in front of them, he sent in how many spies to go in and check out the land? Twelve spies. And there were only two that came back with a positive report. We can, read the, we can read the story there in the book of Numbers. Only two came back. Joshua was one of them. Who was the other one? Caleb. Joshua and Caleb came back and said, you know what, boss? Yeah, there's giants in the land. You know, it, it's going to be tough. But we can do it. The other ten said, no, the giants are really big. We can't do it. They were fearful. Joshua was fearless. He says, we can, in fact, do this. So, um, because of the other ten, um, they didn't get to enter right in, and around and around they went, and finally they went in. And that's why Joshua, when he finally took control, he was able to say, hey, you, let's, we can do this. Let's be courageous and go on. And he was, he was uh, uh, talking from a, a place of experience. One of the things that I've done um, through these seven characteristics or these characteristics I want to touch on this morning is um, a few of them. I want to bring in a personal experience. So I thought about, well, I've had a big, full life. I thought, my personal experience. Fearless? Really, Bruce? At what point in your life did you have to really buckle up, so to speak, and become fearless? Well, I'll tell you what. We married young. My wife and I married young. I was 21. I think she was 20. A year and a half goes by, and all of a sudden, she's pregnant with our firstborn son, Nathan. Love that guy. Had a great 18 months. Next thing you know, we have another, well, we have another pregnancy. And wait, but there's more. What's the Ginsu Knife commercial? But wait, there's more. Not only a second pregnancy 18 months later, a second pregnancy with twins. All of a sudden... I'm thinking, what are you doing? You've got three babies that you're going to have to take care of? Are you crazy? I had to say, God, you're going to have to help me. And I became fearless, and I said, God, I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to work this principle. I'm going to go back to what I've been learning in Bible college and say, you're going to provide every step of the way. A lot of times, finances comes into a, a young man's life, and how am I going to provide? You need to be fearless. Work the principles and say, hey, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna begin I'm gonna continue to trust and pray that the Lord provides. Um, so here we are. Five kids later, nine grandkids later, working on 44 years into our 44th year of marriage. So I've been fearless, and I thank the Lord for that. Number, uh, or letter number two, the second one is A. That word is, is the word, the characteristic is attentive. I love each one of these, but attentive is so good. I really believe that this is important. It's so very important and I've written in there just be there to get a hold of this one just be there drop everything else just to be in your child's or your children's presence it's so very important and I like these words to be aware conscientious interested oh my goodness observant alert awake and enthralled I love all of these because it paints the picture that as fathers, we have to be there. Not just be in the same room, but be connected. I've so enjoyed the last number of years having our two of our nine grandkids around us. And each year, they get smarter and smarter. They, they, they get more and more enjoyable. And I hardly want to miss, miss a moment when, when I can engage them. Because they're, they're getting, it's just so enjoyable. But the only way to engage them is to be there, not just be in the room while you're watching something on TV and they're, they're wanting to connect. So very important, attentive. Um, I, would like to, I would like to share this with you. You know how easy it is to get distracted in today's life. We have so many distractions and we have so many good reasons of not to be attentive. Um, that doesn't sound right. We don't really have any good reasons not to be attentive. Uh, we have reasons that can take us away from being attentive. Uh, how many of you know that when uh, technology uh, kind of took a big jump here a few years ago, we finally took a deep breath and said, man, things are going to get a whole lot easier. No, no more stress. We have all this, the age of technology, and it's going to be so easy. We'll have information at the tip of our hands. Well, we came to find out that that's not so true. I am more busy, you are more busy, you are more occupied, and you and I are more distracted than ever in the age of technology. Isn't that true? Here we have our iPhones with all the information you could ever want, and you know what? We're walking around with our heads and our iPhones, always getting this information, and we have become distracted. Well, I thought about that, and I thought about one of my favorite songs. Many of you know that I was, uh, I was born in 1957, and I was in high school from 71 to 75. I'm right in that wheelhouse of the greatest time on, in America. <laughs> At least all my people in my 1975 graduating class think it was the best of times. I thought it was the best of times. The economy wasn't bad, the political uh, uh, stuff that we face today wasn't so bad. Uh, there was an age of exploration, we were going to the moon, rocket ships. Uh, it was a great time. The best music ever was written in the 1970s, Christian and secular. It made me think of the folk song that many of us know called Cats in the Cradle. Do you remember this song? One of the greatest folk songs ever written it was written in 1974 by the name uh, of by, by a guy by the name of Harry Chapman. He wasn't very famous. Uh, he had a, a handful of hits, but he wrote the song "Cats in the Cradle." And the reason I'm sharing this with you this morning is that I quickly want to read the lyrics because it says exactly what I'm trying to say about being attentive. The lyrics go like this: like this. And my child arrived just the other day. He came into the world the usual way, but there were planes to catch and bills to play, to pay. He learned to walk while I was away, and he was talking before I knew it. And as he grew, he said, I'm going to be just like you, Dad. You know I'm going to be just like you. Well, the chorus goes on to say, and the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon, the little boy blue and the man in the moon, 
quote unquote, when are you coming home, Dad? I don't know when, but we'll get together then. You know we'll have a good time then. That's the kind of the picture. Well, the second verse says, my son turned 10 just the other day. He said, thanks, Dad, for the ball. Come on, let's play. Can you teach me to throw? I said, not today. I got a lot to do, he said. That's okay. And he, he walked away, but his smile never dimmed. He said, I'm going to be like him. Yeah, I know I'm going to be like him. And then once again, the chorus about the cats in the cradle. Well, he came home from college just the other day, so much like a man, I just had to say, son, I'm proud of you. Can you sit for a while? He shook his head and he said with a smile, what I'd really like, Dad, is to borrow the keys. Can I see you later? Can I have them, please? I think a lot of us that have been there and done that can, we're shaking our heads, we say, hey, we can relate to that. Once again, the cats in the cradle, silver spoon, little boy blue and the man in the moon. When are you coming home, Dad? I don't know when, but we'll get together then. You know we'll have a good time then. Always putting it off. And then this fourth verse. I've long since retired. My son's moved away. I called him up just the other day. I said, I'd like to see you if you don't mind. He said, I'd love to, Dad, if I could find the time. You see, my job, my new job's a hassle, and the kids have the flu. But it's sure nice talking to you. It's been sure nice talking to you. And as I hung up the phone, it occurred to me, he'd grown up just like me. My boy was just like me. And the cat's in the cradle, and the silver spoon, little boy blue, and the man in the moon. When you come home, son, I don't know when, but we'll get together then, Dad. You know we're going to have a good time then. Wow. Every time I think about that song, it just, it just hits me. I guess it really rides home to me is because when the song came out, we listened to it. Our generation listened to it. And I looked at my own father, and I saw how busy he was. Thank the Lord that there was a real good balance. Maybe he wasn't the best dad in some areas, but I certainly was not abandoned. But I'd like to uh, remind you to be attentive when thinking about your own children. Let's go on to number three. Trustworthy. I love this word, trustworthy. Write that down. In every circumstance, an assurance that you will be able to be relied on as honest and trustful. Truthful. Honest is the idea. Upfront. True and truthful. Respectful. Consistent. I love that word. Consistent. Consistency. Unwavering unfailing and reputable, trustworthy. We want to be trustworthy. Being trustworthy starts with learning what it means and how do we do that? We learn from the Lord himself, that he's our example. When we trust in him and we experience his trustworthiness, we then can exemplify that to others in our life, especially to our own children. Love the verse out of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all that you do, and he will show you which path to take. It starts with trusting him. Once you learn that principle, then it can filter down to your children. I want you to be trustworthy. Uh, on a personal note, I had to learn this the hard way. With my three boys early on, this was before my daughter Bethany came, and uh, my three boys were around as they were growing up, all the way until they were eight or nine. Um, I'd promise them stuff, but I wouldn't deliver. And pretty soon they got smart, and they told me, "Why you're not delivering, Dad? You're just a bag of hot wings." <laughs> I wasn't trustworthy. I'd make a bet with them. I'd never pay it off. I'd tell them I was going to do this. I wouldn't do that. Hope I think I changed before my daughter showed up eight years after that. But uh, ask her after the message. Maybe she could say no, and he still wasn't trustworthy. It's a lifelong process to learn to be trustworthy. Number, uh, or the next letter, the letter H. 
I, I, I so love this. And these are really hand-picked uh, characteristics of mine. Helpful. Write that down. Helpful. I love this. Giving or ready to give and extend help by serving or assistance. Love this word. It's so important in our lives. Accommodating, cooperative, caring, and hospitable. These are all great words that, that paint the picture of being helpful. Uh, I believe that um, once you learn this as a father, it can be taught to the kids. I saw our kids over here this morning in worship, and they're, they're playing um, the little shakers, and they're learning rhythm. Uh, I remember when we raised our own kids, we had them lined up here on the front row, all four of them, before the fifth one came. And they, they watched how the worship was done, and pretty soon, in the blink of an eye, they're up here, and they're the worship band. That's how quick it goes. So this morning, our little ones were helpful in the worship. Uh, my, my older, my boys, I say older boys, my, my boys, my, not my youngest, but even my youngest, when I think about my own kids, they remind me, dude, you had us like slaves at the church. We set up every for every event, tables, chairs, clean up. And you know what? They did learn that because of their dad and their mom. We, we exemplified what it was to be helpful. And that has served them their entire life. All of my children are servants. If you recall, when we moved into this very building here for four months straight, day and night, from six in the morning to six at night, the son over here, he and I got up, we went by the Jack in the Box, got a coffee and something to drink for him, a couple of breakfast sandwiches, we came here and we worked all day long. What did we do? We re refurbished this entire building here. We had help, but we worked. He knows how to work. All of my children know how to be Helpful. Um, I believe that this is, this is um, a key to our life. I like this. Uh, it's not on your hand out there, but I, I, I on the drive in this morning, I was thinking, I just going over in my mind being helpful. Uh, Colossians two twenty three. Whatever Paul says, whatever you do, whatever you find to do, whatever you do, whatever your hand finds to do, <clears throat> do it as what unto the Lord. That has been a motto of mine. Whatever I do, do it is unto the Lord. Even on my jobs, my career, when I worked for other people, I did it as unto the Lord. I've talked many, many times about my skunky superintendent. Well, when it got really smelly and skunky, I said, God, I'm here for you, man. I'm working. I'm working for him. I'm working for you. I'm not working for him. I'm working for you. I want to punch him in the nose, but I'm working for you. Being helpful is so very important. So, where are we? We are down to just a few more. We have E and R and S. Letter E, enthusiastic. Write that word down. Enthusiastic. I've always loved this word, enthusiastic or enthusiasm. It comes from the Greek word theos or God, which... Uh, that's the same word that we also get the, um, the, the two words monotheism, and that, that's uh, wor uh, worship of just one God, monotheism, and theocracy, that's a government that focuses on uh, a religious aspect, or in, in this case, God. Um, some of the ways of interpreting the meaning would be the spirit of God within, the spirit of God within, or God included. Or, or this idea that whatever you're doing, uh, God is in the middle of it. It's showing the intense and eagerness. Uh, I like these words, passionate, in, uh, ingenerate, excited, and exuberant. And um, there's days that I'm more enthusiastic than others. Um, I, I understand that. And you know what? You understand that too. Some days you're you're more get up and go, get that pony going, let's get that car moving. We got a big day ahead of us. And then there's some days that we're not so enthusiastic. I understand that. But the idea is that the underlying current, who you are, 
as an individual, and especially who you are as a father. You need to be embraced and enthusiastic about it. One of the things I've learned in parenting, it goes so quickly. It goes so quickly, and when it went by, then I thought about my own life. Let me explain it by this. Yeah, the boys came, and next thing I know, I got the twins, and then my, then my daughter, and but I turned around and blinked, and they're gone out of the house. Before I knew it, they're gone. I could hardly believe that. And I realized that in reality, in the course of our life, being a father, day in and day out, we, we never lose our kids. And I won't go down that road, but we never lose our kids. <laughs> but it goes so quickly, those first 18 years. I could hardly believe how quick it went by. Then I thought about my own life, and I realized, you know, I love my parents, but, you know, as I got into my 40s and 50s, I realized I was only with my mom and dad under roof in their presence day in and day out for a short 18 years out of all of these years. So it goes by so quickly, right? So we want to be enthusiastic every single day, just like that song, Cats in the Cradle. We'll get together soon, son. We'll have a good time. Then, don't blink. That 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 then is like here and now. You don't want to let that get by you. So the idea is that we want to be passionate. We want to be exuberant. Um, I remember um, uh, I, I mentioned my son and going at Peru and our kids going there. I remember I remember when I was called to Peru. I remember when God spoke to me confirmed it in my heart it just we did just did, didn't get get up and go it was a two-year planning period our kids had to finish high school it, it was it was complicated on so many levels but when I marched into my owner's office my boss I had two bosses two owners I marched in I said I need to talk to you guys and uh, usually we just casually talk them but when I told them I need to see you in your office they both showed up and they're looking at me and they say, what's up? I said, I'm leaving. And they say, what? I said, I'm leaving. I said, well, what are you talking about? You're leaving. We finally got the company where we want it. Matter of fact, we want to turn it over to you here in a few years. Uh, you're making a good wage and the company's going great. We got a great reputation throughout the city. You got your own car. You got that great expense account. Look at you, you gained 20 pounds. You're going out to eat with all the adjusters and the contractors. Everything's good for you. You want more money? I said, no, God's called me to take my next step. I've been through a Bible college, and now I'm going to leave secular work and go to into full-time Christian service. I'm going to be a missionary. He just looked at me and says, you're, you're crazy. Well, it took him a couple of weeks to let it settle in, and then they finally realized, this is the, they, they said, wow, this guy's going after his dream, after his calling. They got behind me. They sent me off. It was really a good thing. But the, I, the idea that um, I was enthusiastic about what God wanted me to do, and uh, that's what we want to do every single step of the way. Let me go on to number, uh, the next letter, letter number R. Now, you need to listen very carefully when I, when I say this. But put down, write down the word righteous. Righteous. What in the world is pastor talking about? Let me explain. Righteous in this context of what we want to be, we want to be in right standing before God. And we want to be justified. We want to be in good stand. Experiencing a relationship with Jesus and demonstrating that on a daily basis. You see, uprightness refers to righteousness. Faultless. I, I so love these words. Faultless, blameless, guiltless, sinless, and pure because of the forgiveness of Christ. All of those things are a byproduct of our relationship with Jesus. I love Proverbs 20, verse 7. The righteous lead blameless lives. Blessed are their children after them. So why do I use this word? If anything that I've said so far, focus on making sure that your relationship with the Lord is right. Are you hearing me? Make sure that it's right, because from there, it funnels down to yourself and your children. We are, you're in good standing with God. Your kids benefit from that. They see it. 
We've heard so many stories about people that say, you know, my dad didn't serve God. My dad wasn't even home. He didn't even show up. He was gone. He, in fact, he left my mother. We hear all of these stories. But I want to challenge you this morning. Fathers, if you have that opportunity, grandfathers, make sure that you're in right standing with God. It's so very important to have your own spiritual standing correct. It's not just a one-time thing. I accept Jesus. Here I am. I got my ticket punched. I'm going to heaven. No. It's a daily working out your salvation. Um, remember once again in the song, the kids are watching. I'm going to be just like you, Dad. I'm going to be just like you. If there isn't anything sobering that I want to say to this say to you this morning is that children are watching your relationship with God because they love you. They want to follow you. They want to be just like you, Dad. Just like you. And then my last one, S. I love this one. Sweet. Write down the word sweet. Having the pleasant taste characteristics of sugar or honey. I'm a big sugar guy. Joanne loves the honey. Uh, not salt or sour or bitter. Sweet. We know what that is. Uh, said um, uh, best pleasing in general and delightful. I like these words. Agreeable. Being sweet. You're agreeable. You're nice. You're attractive. Not attractive because you're you're, you've lost a few pounds, or you got your hair made a certain way, or you trim your beard. Attractive in spirit, in words, in actions. Attractive. Love this word, charming. And lastly, loving. Lovely. Lovely. So sweet. I want to be sweet the entire journey. And I, let me tell you what. It's easier said than done. I'm telling you, I've been down the road. It's not easy being sweet every single moment of the day. We have the opportunity to be sweet every single moment of the day, in every situation. It's a choice that we make. And I love these characteristics and these reminders because this is what we're talking about. I need to leave here in this next week. I need to work on these things of what it means to be a father. Not this week, but next week, every single day. I need to work on these, and I need to be sweeter. Um, we all understand that the sin nature is, is, is real. I, I know 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. The old has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And yet, that sin nature raises its ugly head, and we have a tendency to give in to it. How many of you know that when you're really mad and upset and you scream and you yell, it feels really good for a moment. Afterwards, it doesn't feel so good. You feel like, man, I'm such a skunk. I'm such a loser. Why did I lose my cool? It's real. We have to be prepared. We have to be on guard to be sweet and to be kind and to be gentle. Uh, just like these words talk about agreeable. Um, I love the, the uh, snicker, uh, the candy bar Snickers. How many of you like Snickers? I love Snickers. I, the, the kids come home from picking up candy at Halloween. Don't you move from the living room. Lay it all out, and I go through and I take out the Snickers, right? <laughs> I do because it's my favorite candy bar. But I love the commercial of Snickers. So the guy is the guy or the girl in the commercial. They're just some wild animal. They're they're just so out of character. And someone slips them a Snickers bar. They open it up and they eat it, and all of a sudden they're back to normal, right? Well, we need to have a pocket full of Snickers with us at all times, ready to go. Because um, when we don't get our rest, when we don't eat right, when we let our blood sugar drop. Right here, who am I talking to? Carl and I. What, we get a little grouchy. We get a little unnerved. We have to take care of ourselves. We don't sleep eight hours, seven hours a day. We, we it makes for a long day. We need to be sweet. I'm, I wrote this down, and you can write it down. Sweetness is king. I like that so much. And I'm 
finishing just with this one verse there you have on your handouts. Proverbs 14, 26. I love this. Um, 14, 26 of Proverbs says, I love all the Proverbs. Matter of fact, I was going to do all Proverbs verses um, for these principles. I thought, you know, I'll just leave it with this one. 14, 26. Whoever fears the Lord, honors the Lord, gives himself to the Lord. Whoever fears the Lord has a secure fortress and for their children it will be a refuge. As a father, that's what you want. You want your home to be a safe refuge, a place in the midst of the storm. So, Father, we thank you for the, the, um, the a day to celebrate fathers. We thank you for these few characteristics that we've touched upon. God, let them not just be words or a voice or a story or a, a lyric from a song. But, Lord, I pray for each one of our fathers today and going forward, each one of our grandfathers today and going forward, that they would focus on what does it really mean to be a father? It's just not one day to get to have a barbecue and take a nap, but it's so much more. God, I pray that you would help us. Thank you for your word, and I pray that it would have lasting effect on each of us. In Jesus' name, and everyone say, Amen. 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 Well, thank you for listening and being attentive. Enjoy your day. And um, uh, if you're a father, you guard your cookies. Uh, I have cookies for the other kids. Guard your cookies. God bless you. Have a great morning. <laughs>